Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're back on the MR2, or should I say the MR2 ECU. Got some troubles. Brilliant. Stay tuned. Haven't started the car since the last video. I attempted to start the car the other day. Basically, it hasn't been started for a while now. So I figured turn the engine on, get the temp, to set the car idle for a bit, and it would not start. Basically, it would run for about two or three seconds, then stop. Two or three seconds, then stop. I spent a full afternoon basically going through the whole back of the car, checking all the fuses, making sure the wiring's okay, the ground runs okay. Removed the fuel line, crank the engine, fuel's coming up. That meant the fuel pump was okay, which is very important in these cars because when the fuel pumps go, that is a headache. I had a coil and a igniter spare, which I know for a fact works. I took it off this car working, put them on, still wouldn't start. Check for spark. Spark seemed okay, but it was erratic. It would spark, not spark, not. That's why I changed up the coil pack and the igniter, but still, it was the same issue. It would spark sometimes, then not other times. So I started thinking, could it be the injectors? If the injectors are not injecting the fuel, then that would explain why the car wouldn't start. I was getting spark, we had plenty of air, we definitely had fuel, but obviously if the fuel wasn't getting into the actual engine itself, possibly the injectors. And then I started playing about, basically, Turn the engine off, leave it five, ten minutes, crank it, would start for a second, cut straight off. The symptoms were like someone was just pinching the fuel line and just cutting the fuel supply to the engine. Basically, the chances that all injectors failed, the coil pack had failed or it was failing on and off, or the wires were failed, or the fuel pump was gummed up. There was a lot of things at play here. And then I started thinking, what controls the fuel going in the engine? It didn't sound like they were blocked. It wasn't trying to run or it wasn't running at all. It was it was running for the exact same amount of time every time. A second, boom, 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 cut. This guy here controls the spark, it controls the ignition. This runs the car. Is this at fault? So as soon as I went online and started looking into MR2 ECU issues, surely enough, capacitors came straight to the top. These are capacitors and there is several in this ECU and two of mine have 100% failed. Let's go inside, have a look, and I'll show you guys what exactly has failed. So the ECU itself seems perfectly fine on this side, but when we lift it up and have a look at the other side, we can clearly see this capacitor here has failed. It's actually leaked out on the board. If you see this brown stain, that is actually leaked from the capacitor. So that capacitor is obviously dried out, and spilled its guts and is no longer doing what it's supposed to do. When I first came in I wanted to get rid of as much of this as I possibly could so I just soaked all this down with some circuit board cleaner that'll just come straight off. So let's not worry about the white stuff it's more so this dark burnt grubby stuff here. Alcohol q-tips let's get this board nice and clean and we'll proceed with getting this capacitor off the board. So not great news, basically cleaned it all up, I don't know if the camera is going to pick this up but it's actually destroyed the lines, there's one, two, three lines going through here and there's about four or five here which it just badly corroded the capacitor unfortunately has eaten them away now these lead back to this chip yes I could run a wire from here to the terminal down here and that would work I'm not going to say it's not the correct thing to do because a professional might actually do that themselves but I just don't trust it not to me, it's not worth the risk, I don't think. I've not even looked at this one yet. I can already see here a resistor has some pitten crud on it. And the capacitor is, well, it's leaked quite a lot. I've been checking for resistance and some terminals are fine. Others have quite a bit. The minute we've got an open circuit, if we go to this point here, which is the back of that chip, this is one of the lines that comes all the way down. It makes contact there. 
as you can see that's travel zero so that's okay this, on either side is a chip we've just been testing on this point we've now moved along and it comes to one of these there that one comes to this one as you can see we're getting 0 0.343 of resistance actually shared with other terminals which i don't think is correct so clearly the bridging at some point and the ground out so i'm not too happy about this board it's a shame because these cost i think two pounds both of them and i only need two of the smaller ones do i pay a company to repair this it's not cheap but at least i know it's fully tested fully guaranteed it is not going to destroy the engine because this controls your engine basically your whole car and if you mix something up inside of here you could be over fueling you could be under fueling you could do a lot of stuff wrong with this putting these in will probably help but if something's touching something else and it shouldn't be it could do a lot of damage so it is the following week and i went with the correct option which was picking up a replacement ecu went to a few forums put out a couple of wanted posts and sure enough someone got in touch and was able to send me a replacement ecu this is a perfect replacement numbers matching so hopefully this should fix the issue so this being used obviously it could be identical to this one i did ask the guy before i paid for it if he wouldn't mind taking the top cover off and showing me the board he did that the pictures seemed perfectly fine the capacitors all looked fine so hopefully this should work this should be a direct replacement and we should have no issues so i think i'll take the cover off myself have a look just verify everything's okay and take it from there Capacitor C512 was completely perished, it destroyed the board, that is perfect in this one, and C810, it looks fine, I can kind of see a tiny amount of leakage, possibly, or it could just be a bit of dirt, it's hard really to tell. So let's get this in the car and see if the engine starts, if it does, we know it was a fault, if it doesn't, then we've got other issues but let's get this back in and hopefully it'll all work <laughs> so it's a bit of a mess in here basically i've been taking parts off to check electrical circuits i thought the ignition barrel was faulty I didn't know if the stereo, the back was grounding something out. Key in. I can hear the fan at the back. So, will it start? Go and check the fuses and see what's going on. <laughs> Finally, what a pain! We've got no engine lights, that's good.
best replace the capacitors in the ECU because they failed before in the past, they're probably going to fail again. So let's be proactive and replace them now while it's working and prevent any more spillage on the board. We're looking at C512 and on this side the terminals are here. I'm literally just going to heat up the solder using this guy here, place it over the top, push the button, sucks up the solder, drop it aside and continue till that's all gone. Once the solder's gone, the other side, remove the capacitor, slide in the new capacitor making sure that the stripe is against the negative side. Two drops of solder and call it done. So we got it in, you can see the stripe on the capacitor is on the negative side of the board, which is correct. I've put two drops of solder on the top. So let's remove C810 and do the same thing. So that capacitor is here. So I don't know if you guys can work that out on the camera because it's pretty rubbish up close but there's some leakage on the board of the capacitor and the capacitor itself if it'll focus is junk. It's a good thing we're putting a new one in because that was about to give me a bad day I think. Just give it a clean up, it's pretty, pretty dirty. There was some droplets around the capacitor but it wasn't that bad. I wonder if running the car has caused that to do that. This has probably been sat for a few months, maybe a few years, and obviously it's been running the car, it's overheated and leaked. So it's a good thing we changed it out. So let's put the new one in and get it in place. Thank you. 
So I'm very happy with that. I think that worked out pretty well. And on the back, it's pretty neat and tidy. So one thing I was doing is I was getting drops of solder on the connections, but then I was going back over and heating it back up. And what that basically does is allow a bit of it to melt down inside the board. So when you go the other side, you can do the same on the other side and they'll make contact. It's time to put this back in the car and hopefully all is well. So ECU is back in. We have an engine light, which is good. Clutch in. And now we wait. So the car is almost at full temp and it seems to be running perfectly fine. happy guys it seems to be a lot better throttle response seems way better so I brought it back in and just inspected it make sure everything was okay you may have noticed that if you look closely enough that was actually the wrong way around the stripe is the negative and as you can see the negative terminal is on this side I first installed it with the negative terminal on that side so took it off put it back on so this is the original ECU. I have replaced them on this one also. I figured why not? I've got the capacitors so I may as well use them up. Did a much better job on this one. Very neat and tidy. Looks almost OEM. Quite tidy on the, the back side also. As I said before, basically them lines are making contact but there's resistance. So you basically need to retrace them points you just basically run from point to point and connect it back up but I don't want to mess about with stuff like that that's replacing a capacitor is very simple and quite easy to do and you can't really mess it up if I connect one of these to the wrong point it could cause mayhem could melt wires could it could do a lot of stuff and I wasn't prepared to take the risk I managed to pick up a replacement ECU for 90 pounds replace the capacitors which were pennies I think it was like a pound for five so yeah really cheap fix guys and I'm quite happy It'll, uh, I'm confident the car will last a long time now if you catch this early enough before it start leaking like I did with the replacement one then you should be fine there should be no corrosion to the board so it's a simple swap out of the capacitors but if you've got corrosion you can retrace them I guess but for me, it was much simpler just to go out and pick up a replacement ECU, do the, the quick fix with the capacitors, and hopefully it should be all good. If you don't know how to solder, best off going on YouTube and checking out some videos. There's plenty out there. My first attempt on the new ECU was fine. It'll work, but this is much better. I probably should have practiced on this one first and then did my one, but I'm happy with the results. It's nice and clean and tidy and does the job. I should mention also that previously to this when i last took it out for its long drive for the mot basically what i would find it drove fine but when i was at idle if i pulled up on the side of the road and let the engine just tick over it would kind of it would drop slightly in rpm and then shoot up to about 1.5 and then drop back down again to about 1.1 1.2 i just assumed that it was some little niggle with the mr2 maybe it was a common issue and it didn't really affect the performance, it still drove perfectly fine, but that might have been an indication that the idle control capacitor was starting to fail. If you have fluctuating idle issues, it could possibly be this fail on you. The ECU might be on its way out. It could be the igniter, it could be the ignition coil, it could be faulty spark plugs, faulty wires. It could be a lot more other things, obviously, but this is a free fix as it is. Take the ECU out, remove the screws, pull back the board, inspect them. If there's any bits of sticky brown goop on the board, then you've probably got a leaky capacitor. Rather than moving all the electrical side of it and moving plugs and checking everything else out, it doesn't take five minutes and it'll rule it out. I will be carrying out some work on the headlamps and on the louvers at the back. They need permanently fixing. They need to make up some sort of brace, some sort of frame to hold them in place because at the minute they're just kind of bolted on loosely, but that will come in the future. Not the minute, it's a bit too cold. 
probably going to wait till beginning of March, maybe middle of March, and then start work back on the MR2. But for the time being, guys, I'm going to leave this one here. Hopefully, take you guys out. Like always, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and I'll see you in the next one.